He set a dangerous precedent that now puts a price on the head of all American soldiers and, you know, admits that there is absolutely a possibility that the release of these Taliban commanders could result in an attack on America once again. So what more can this man do while he is in office to get himself impeached? He is truly pushing the envelope as far as he possibly can. But this leads us to another thing that is kind of tied up, wrapped up in this whole Bergdahl thing. The white Al-Qaeda agenda. This is something that they've been hyping up. We've been warning you about this for years, and they've really been hyping this up in the last year or so, for sure, trying to convince everyone that the veterans are domestic terrorists and that there's, you know, home, homeland, homegrown terrorists. And this is, of course, justifying the need to beef up their homeland security. Uh, because of these potential domestic terrorists. Well, now, Attorney General Eric Holder has just unveiled this week his plan to create a new Justice Department task force that will focus on the threat of homegrown terrorism. Now, this was in a video posted to the department's website on Monday, which was, of course, later removed. Eric Holder said, we face an escalating danger from self-radicalized individuals within our own borders as the nature of the threat we face evolves to include the possibility of individual radicalization via the internet. It's critical that we return our focus to potential extremists here at home. And of course, just ramping this up, creating the need for the facial recognition database that the NSA is collecting, um, all of their spying that they're doing, their surveillance, letting us know that there are these potential terrorists, and now there's some new leaders uh, back to replenish the ranks in the Taliban. So, you know, on, constantly on red alert for a terrorist attack. But <clears throat> Holder went on to use the example of the Boston Marathon bombers as an example of potential domestic terrorists. But again, the FBI knew about the Boston bombers and failed to stop that or any other domestic terror plots. And in fact, they are known to create most of the terror plots so that then they can come and save the day. But it's just like they knew and they've been knowing for the last five years where Bo Bergdahl was and that he was a, a deserter, possibly you know, aiding the terrorists. And so they wait to rescue him until it's conveniently timed to help, you know, take the light off of the scandal plaguing the veterans affairs. Um, so they knew all of this the entire time. And instead of doing something about it, uh, they release these top five <laughs> Taliban commanders, knowing that they're likely to propagate to some new recruits. And that's just it. It's order out of chaos. They need all of this chaos to justify the prison planet that they are building all around us. They need these domestic terrorists to justify the need to beef up homeland security, to convince us that we all need to get grabbed by the TSA in the streets, um, and that they need more money and they need war because it justifies the military industrial complex. And that's why they've got this latest distraction and we're going to get to the bottom of it because it's there's just too many questions, um, you know, but. Basically, we've been telling you they want us all to be lined up. We're all domestic terrorists. If anyone has a uh, you know disagreement with the political agenda, we are now the enemy. Now, coming up, I'm going to talk to you about the NSA and their latest efforts to build a huge facial recognition database. They're basically stealing your photos. And then you are not going to want to miss Nancy Pelosi's reaction to a tough question posed by a teenager. That's coming up right after this. Well, according to documents leaked by Edward Snowden, the NSA is intercepting millions of images every day via the internet, including 55,000 facial recognition quality images. Now, the agency has uh, turned to some new software that helps them exploit the flood of images included in emails, text messages, social media, video conferences, and other communications on its mission of tracking suspected terrorists. Now, according to the NSA's new director, their use of this facial recognition uh, stays within the legal boundaries. We can trust them to <laughs> obey the laws there. Now, 
According to him, he says the NSA doesn't access motor vehicle or passport databases to examine images of U.S. citizens. So basically, he's assuring us that the he, the NSA doesn't go into these existing government databases that are already set up. Basically, they are intercepting these images by surreptitiously breaking into your emails and your Skype feeds and stealing these images. Um, he says that whenever they come across the potentiality that they're you know, tracking and monitoring someone with a U.S. connection, they stop. Right. But then he goes on to echo which is quite possibly what was being discussed at Bilderberg this last weekend, the issue of privacy. And of course, he is now spouting what's going to be the new argument that citizens just need to come to terms with all of this spying. He says, the idea that you can be totally anonymous in the digital age is increasingly difficult to execute. But that is not a satisfactory solution. Just deal with it, just get used to it. Maybe that's okay to the lapdog media that's gonna start pushing out this message, but that's not okay with us here at InfoWars, and it's not okay with the young Andrew Demeter. He is the 16-year-old investigative journalist that's fighting the new world order, one tough question at a time. We've interviewed Andrew here on the show before, and he's made some great documentaries um, for the Truth Movement. And you know, due to those really great documentaries, he was a winner of the Student Cam Documentary Competition put on by C-SPAN. And one of their big prizes they had was getting to meet <laughs> Nancy Pelosi. Well, Andrew used his opportunity to confront Nancy Pelosi about her stance on the NSA's overreach. Why do you support the NSA's illegal and ubiquitous uh, data collection? Well, I, I do not. I have questions about the metadata collection that they were uh, collecting, unless they had a reason to do so. Uh, so I found I was one. From, I, did, I didn't support. I didn't support Amash that a resolution. I didn't think that was the appropriate resolution. Uh, but I do think that the burden is on the the uh, department and I have fought them for years, on the community, fought them for years on the wide swath that they have put out there. You did vote for a bill to continue funding for the NSA though? Yeah, of course. I don't think we should not fund the National Security Agency. No, they do many, is many it, things. Isn't the NSA a clear violation of the Fourth Amendment? No, no. Some of what they should, what they do should be subjected to scrutiny in some of the things, but they perform many other functions as well and uh, we hold them to a high order. And I've had my biggest fight here in, in the intelligence community with the director of the NSA, uh, Hayden, when he was the director, I don't think he was on the level with us. But that doesn't mean that there aren't other things that are there uh, that, are, um, that are good things uh, that, are, that are necessary for us to have. But from 9-11 on, the Bush administration went too far on all of these things, and, and uh, we have the correspondence back and forth to prove or to demonstrate that they were just doing the wrong thing. Oh, Nancy Pelosi, did you see the look on her face? She was just stuttering. Someone's getting fired. She's like, who let this thinker in here? Now, Andrew is much braver than me. Uh, obviously, a great example for the next generation. Uh, Demeter said, if I a shy, socially inept high school student can expose on a global scale the paradox that is politics by asking nothing more than a question, then so too can you. And he is absolutely right. Those are wise words. That is exactly what we must do. And that's, of course, what we try to do every single year when we cover the Bilderberg meetings. And this year, our reporters on the ground actually got the opportunity to speak to a Bilderberger and find out what goes on behind the closed doors of that shadowy conference. Now that is coming up right after this. David Knight for InfoWars. We're here live in Copenhagen for the 2014 Bilderberg meeting and this is basically the end. The last of the delegates have pulled away it's a bit after three o'clock in the afternoon. This has been an unusual Bilderberg conference in the sense that we were so close to where they were. It was in a smack dab in the middle of a very busy city, as opposed to being out in a remote resort with golf courses where people were very far away. So we were able to get quite a 
bit of close-up footage of them arriving, of them departing, of them having their meetings on the outside. And of course, as Watson pointed out, they had their bizarre charm offensive where one politician, Samsung, who is a uh, member of parliament from the Netherlands, he's the leader of the Labour Party, he came out several times to engage the public, to engage the press. Was it anything of substance? We did hear him make some interesting admissions about some things that were not on the agenda. So, uh, Do but, you have a presentation about uh, I, renewable I'm, energy? I don't know enough about oh about renewable energy. I should, uh, but that's not on the that's not our main topic on the agenda. No. no. What's your favorite topic then so far? My favorite topic, I think it's the uh, discussion about privacy. Really? Does yeah. privacy exist, or should privacy exist? It should exist, and it's diff more, even it's getting more difficult to to keep it. For who? Us or you guys? Well, for me, because you're following me with a You're camera. in a public place. <laughs> yeah, for you, you're in a public place too. Now, why are we here? We're here because we want people to understand that Bilderberg exists. We want them to understand the agenda. For many decades, of course, it was laughed at if anyone suggested there was even such a group as Bilderberg. We're hoping by documenting the fact that it really exists, that we really see these people going in and out of these meetings, we're hoping that now that people are accepting that it's there, that they start to question whether or not this is really just some benign meeting. This is a meeting that they have pushed very hard for decades to keep secretive. And now we see the fruits of what they've been planning for a long time. As Davignon has said, they, he took credit for creation of the European Union and the Euro back in 1955. People in Europe are not happy with the fruits of what happened there. Daniel Esselin told people well before we saw the downturn in America that they were going to pump and dump the mortgage market in America, create a banking crisis. We've seen the fruits of what's happening in America. We keep showing these secretive organizations. We keep showing that the U.S. government is planning and preparing and creating scenarios and training sites for internal unrest. People need to collect, connect these dots and understand what's going on. And that's what we hope will come of this Bilderberg meeting. The fact that, as we saw with Ed Balls trying to sneak in with a suitcase full of paperwork, this is not just a social meeting. Now, of course, one of the topics that they put out there in their released agenda was, does privacy exist? That's an odd question for somebody, and many people point out the irony of Keith Alexander and General Petraeus, a former director of the CIA, being at a conference where they're asking, does privacy exist? Of course, Google. Palantir are also there, the data mining co corporations. They don't believe that privacy exists because they've done everything they can to take it away. And that's why we see Ed Balls sneaking in with paper information. That's why they need to meet in a hotel that has had everyone removed for days in advance so they can go over it for any listening devices, any bugging devices. They want to meet face to face. They want to exchange information with paperwork because they know that there is no security, there is no privacy in the electronic world. They are not concerned about their personal safety. That's not what these barricades are for. We captured them over and over again, going out one by one, jogging through the city. If they were concerned that they were going to be attacked or kidnapped or shot in the streets, they would be going with partners or bodyguards. They would have a police escort. That wasn't what was happening here. They were going on strolls individually, going shopping, going jogging. That was one of the reasons we were able to get such good pictures of that. What they're concerned about is the information. They want to keep that from you, just as they're keeping the information from you as they negotiate these Trans-Pacific and Transatlantic partnerships in secret. In a scenario that exactly mirrors the way they have created the European Union and the EU, that is the way these elite bankers, industrialists, multinational corporations, politicians, and generals operate in secret. Well, that's it for this conference, but stay tuned because I know more information is going to be surfacing as people start to blow the whistle on Bilderberg 2014. David Knight for InfoWars.com.